Hello everybody! The topic today is going to be handling exceptions in JavaScript, which is pretty important because I've seen a lot of my coworkers being concerned on how to properly code C sharp or PHP, but when the time comes to interact with the user in the browser, let's say to do some simple stuff like display a message or show some results, the application just crashes. Why? Because they didn't give the same importance to the client side and you as a developer is responsible to make sure that not only if but when an error happens your code is able to handle it and if the system requires keep running without stopping the whole application so I'm going to create an example to show the two ways we can do to accomplish that in JavaScript as always we are going to use the solution that I created for the previous tutorials but because some of my friends complained that the files of the videos got too big, this time I'm gonna do something different. Instead of you guys see me typing everything, I'm gonna use some snippets that I've created for this video, so it will make the files smaller and easy to download. Okay, let's just start. We need to create a new website and give the name handling exceptions in JavaScript. Uh, remember, have to remember to set a startup project and also need to add a new item which will be a JavaScript file and we'll give the same name. Okay, here we can delete that and here I'm gonna start using the snippets. Okay, so the snippets you just need, I just need to create to double click and Visual Studio adds it for me. Right, then I just need to explain what it's doing. So here is just a, a normal ta title and the JavaScript re reference in the ASPX page, okay? Now I need to add the div and the buttons. So this div will be the place where I'm going to show the message to, to the users. These buttons we are going to use to invoke the functions that we are going to create in the JavaScript file, okay? Let's go to the JavaScript file and let's start adding some declarations. So I just create this variable because I don't like to hard code strings all over the code, right? So it's much better. If we need to change the name of the, the div, we can change and the code doesn't need to, to, do, to change also. Here I need to check if it's Internet Explorer because it has some different from the other browsers, okay? And we're gonna explain this in a minute. So we can start doing Let's add the on your event. Okay, so here is if you want to catch all the errors in your application, but you don't want to do too many things. So what does it mean? Like here, you're gonna tell the browser. You are telling the browser that every time there is an error in your code, and no other method is handling that code, you want to the browser redirect the error to your method. So you have to specify a method and this method has to have three parameters the message that describes the error the URL of where the error happened and the line that has the error okay so here is where we check if it's Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer always show the number that of the line plus one so you'll see in a minute I'm gonna show an example when you'll see so we need to see if it's we need to check if it's Internet Explorer the number that it's uh, it's giving to us minus one so then it will show the proper line the return to return false is just because if you want to handle and then doesn't show any box or any message from the browser to the user you have to return to if you return false even though you catch it the error the browser will pop up a message to the user saying that there was an error okay so let's go ahead and add this calling method here so this method will call other two methods so one that has an error and one that it's okay and the one that it's that has a mere error is just they are just simple so we create a variable a receive 10 and then we try to c receive a plus b but b is undefined so this will generate an error here and let's just run and you guys gonna see what is going on so we had to create the web web config file okay so if I press you see that there was an error and we handled the error 
and there is no message to the user, right? So line 40. B is undefined and the URL that created the error. Okay, so if we go to the line 40, you'll see the exact the line that has the error. Okay? But if we return false and we run the same code, you will see that we will catch the error, but the browser will pop up the error, the error message here. You see? So even though we handle the error, the browser is still showing the message to the user. And if you see here, Internet Explorer show line 41, right? It's sort the 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 same message, the URL, and everything else, but it shows the wrong line. If you go to the to the code, you'll see that line 41 is not the right one. Okay, but then you you can notice one thing. Our code method was supposed to call two other methods, method with error and method without error. But what happened was the second method didn't get executed. Why? Because when the browser s no, uh, when there's error in your code, the application the flow of the application just stops. And if you're using this strategy to, to handle your errors, you cannot just say keep going from where it stopped. Right? So you you really lose uh, the flow the flow of your application will stop. Okay? Uh, so 